Hey everybody, it's Caleb and welcome to the first video in the Linux and Unix video series. So this is going to be a pretty comprehensive video series where we start from the complete beginning of Linux and learn all the details to get to an intermediate and maybe even some advanced stuff as well. Now, again, this might be a little bit slow to start with if you've had some experience with Linux. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more to the point, I created a mini series on introduction to Linux the reason I'm creating another series is because I want to spend more time talking about the details of each command and really understand at a deeper level. So to understand Linux, you should first understand what an operating system is. So this is another example of an operating system, Mac. So you can see this allows us to run software on our computer, such as Google Chrome. Windows is another big operating system. And the one we're going to be using is Ubuntu. So this allows us to do similar things, such as open a web browser. You can see it's just a little bit different in the way it looks and the way it works. So again, the operating system allows us to run different software on our computer. So it's an abstraction layer from the computer hardware down here. Then you have the operating system and then you have the software. So I can write software to run on an operating system and it doesn't matter what hardware that that operating system is running on, as long as they have that operating system, then they're good to go. Another way to think about that is the creators of Google Chrome, they don't have to create a version of Google Chrome for every single combination of computer hardware out there. They just write Google Chrome to run on Mac, Windows, and Linux. So the idea of an abstraction is it hides those details the operating system is what deals with the details of the computer hardware. So this just being a complete beginner introduction, maybe that was a little too deep, but that'll make more sense as we go on. So you'll often hear the terms Linux and Unix. What exactly are these and how are they different? Well, you'll often hear Linux as Unix-like. So it's very similar to Unix and inspired by Unix. One of the biggest examples of Linux is Ubuntu, which is this operating system you're looking at right here. But there are a lot of different distributions, another popular one being Fedora. What these different operating systems that are all considered Linux have in common is they're all built on the same kernel known as Linux. The different variety, well, those are known as distributions. Think of the kernel as the core of the operating system that does the majority of the work. And then there's just software written around that to make these distributions unique. So they all share that same core and thus they're going to have very similar commands and they're gonna be used in very similar ways. They're not gonna be exactly the same, but if you're familiar enough with Ubuntu to be able to open up the terminal and type in various commands, well then you'll probably be able to move to any of these other Linux operating systems just fine. So that's a good thing. If you learn Ubuntu, for example, most of those skills are going to move to any of the other operating systems that all share that Linux kernel. Now, what about Unix? Linux is said to be Unix-like. It was built as a variant of Unix, but there are still Unix-based operating systems out there. A popular Unix operating system that you've probably heard of by now is actually Mac, which is a Unix-compliant operating system. So you can go in here, open the terminal, and type various commands that are going to be very similar to what you would experience on Ubuntu. So Mac actually came from FreeBSD, and here's a little wiki talking about some of the myths about FreeBSD, and it talks about Mac OS here. All right, so far, so good. We have Linux operating systems, an example of one of those being Ubuntu. We have Unix operating systems, an example of the, one of those being Mac. And we also have Windows. Where does Windows fit in in this entire list? Well, Windows is not a Unix-like operating system at all. It's its own entire thing. This makes things challenging because now the commands don't work on all of the operating systems. A command that works on Mac or on Ubuntu isn't guaranteed to work on Windows. This can be frustrating, especially if you're trying to learn these commands and you want a computer to work on. So if you're on Windows, there are some things you can do to issue the same exact commands. For example, you can download MinGW or you can install the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL. However, the easiest way I think to get started with these commands is to use a virtual machine or an operating system 
on the cloud if you know how to do that. That way you can get the exact same experience. You have the operating system running on your computer and it's just inside of another window. See, you can actually minimize it here and see we have Ubuntu and we're running Mac. So this is an example of a virtual machine and this is how I would recommend getting started. That way you follow along exactly instead of kind of making it match for Windows or Mac or whatever operating system you're on. Now, between different Linux operating systems, it's going to be fairly similar. So if you're on another Linux operating system, not Ubuntu, or if you want to follow along on your Mac or Windows PC, you're probably okay to do such, but there just might be a few more challenges that you might need to figure out on your own. If you're looking for a more comprehensive list of the different options for Linux out there, there is a Wikipedia article here, Linux distribution, and you can scroll through here and learn about the different varieties. So for example, here's Ubuntu derived from Debian and a bunch of other ones on here as well. There's a lot of vocabulary thrown around and it's not always 100% clear. For example, people argue, is Mac really considered Unix? Well, it is a Unix compliant operating system, but the experience is gonna be a lot different than you might get on Ubuntu or these other Linux operating systems. For a complete list of the operating systems out there and a more table-like comparison, here's another Wikipedia article, Comparison of Linux Distributions, and you can get a complete list here with tons of information. As you can tell, it's very overwhelming, and I don't expect you to have all this down. I don't have all this down. I'm constantly learning, and doing this series is actually a, an attempt for me to better understand these operating systems as well. I do like Ubuntu, however, it's free, it's very easy to use, and there are a lot of apps built on top of Ubuntu, so pretty much anything you could get on Mac or Windows, you can get some Ubuntu variant. Ubuntu will always be free of charge, which is a great thing to have when you're building computers and you don't want to pay for an operating system. Well, that's all.